The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q. 101. All right, let's get into it. This is very exciting. Lollapalooza, we announced it yesterday, and I'm not going to say in the bands that are playing right now. You just had to kind of know because it could affect the song scramble. I don't want any cheating going on. If you can name the three bands in this song scramble, you are going to Lollapalooza. The first time you know it in your head, call 312-591-8300 right now. Go! There you go. 312-591-8300. Can you name the three bands? There's three in that song scramble. You'll go to Lollapalooza from Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Hey, look, I'm not going to say any of the bands playing Lala right now. We announced it yesterday. You can go to Q101.com or all of our socials to see it because that could affect the song scramble here. Can you name the three bands in this song scramble? All right, 312-591-8300. Nate checking in from Crown Point. Nate, ahoy, what's going on? What's up, Brian? How's it going, man? Okay, name the bands in that song scramble. Go. All right, Pierce the Veil, Blink-182, and Hosier. I can't tell you what you're right or wrong on. Oh, dang. I can't do it. That is not correct. One more time. Let me give it to everybody here. Here we go. Now, everybody listening should stay put. If we can't get a winner in the next five minutes or so, in fact, after Foo Fighters, four minutes and 19 seconds, we'll hit God Bless the Baby, and everybody listening has a chance at the Lollapalooza tickets just by calling in. So, 312-591-8300. Who's in this? Call in and win with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. You'll be going to Lollapalooza. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101, a veteran of Lollapalooza, Foo Fighters. Now, if you can figure out this song, Scramble... You are some of the first people into Lollapalooza. We got four-day passes here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Here it is. All we want is the bands and all three bands performing at Q101's Lollapalooza. So let's get into it. Uh, Christine checking in from Oak Forest. Now, remember, everybody listening, stay here for a couple seconds because if Christina gets it wrong... Got all wrong answers here. We will, up till this point, so we'll just put it out there for everybody, and everybody listening gets a chance to call in and win those tickets. So we go to Christina. Ahoy, Christina. Ahoy. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, so what is in, hold on, these three songs. Here you go. What do you got, Christina? All right, I'm crossing my fingers here. Um, Blink-182, The Killers, and uh, Pierce Seville. That is correct! Ooh, oh! <laughs> oh, my God! Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm, like, shaking. <laughs> I love it. You are going to Lollapalooza to see all those bands with Q101 and Brian and Kenzie. I could, I could kiss all of you. <laughs> oh. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Coming up, we're going to talk about something that happened yesterday. How I basically made America and Chicago a better place. Wow. Yeah. I don't sound shocked, Kara. <laughs> don't sound shocked on that. Coming up here in about four minutes, we'll talk about that. With Th- this is something you did I did specifically yesterday. To and make... the world is a better place because you did this. Yes. Wow. Yep, it is. Well, you thank not, you. You may not fully experience it right now yet this morning as you're driving in in this bad traffic out there. But later on, possibly not in my lifetime, mm. you'll realize <laughs> The children, I did. the grandchildren, those are the people that are going to benefit from something you did yesterday. And that's all I care about. Wow. That's all I really care that's about. That's really noble of you. Actually, I'd like to be around to see it. But <laughs> <laughs> it's great to get that. So it's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And a, and a real special, you know, it's, it's a bittersweet day, obviously. It's uh, Chester Bennington's birthday from Lincoln Park. Uh, he would have been 48 years old today. I can't believe it's been seven years. Wow. 2017. 
July tw- it was July 20th is when we lost him. Uh, seven years. Uh, so I guess he would have been. That, I guess it would have been his birthday by now. March 20th being his birthday today, he would have been 48 years old. Whew. It's crazy. It's a lot. It's a lot uh, because of. I feel like Lincoln Park and the history of Q101. Hist- Q101 goes back 30 years, and this. You know, I remember Lincoln Park arriving. You know, just after 2000 in that area, we were 2000 of 20 years, which sounds ridiculous to say out loud. It's been that long. Yeah. Um, and then. The partnership with that band when they played Jamboree, I remember I've told this story on the air a bunch of times, but I remember I was kind of sleeping on the couch at Tinley Park after Jamboree, after they performed, and I hear this, feel this tap on my shoulder, just taking a little break after the 25-hour days that we had there doing those things, and it was Chester. He's like, hey, I just wanted to thank you guys for having us here. Oh, that's nice. And, and it was so nice. He didn't have to do that, and then I got up and talked to him for a couple minutes, and then they left. They had, we would like to stay for the whole night. But we have to go to our next show because they were really grinding then, getting in every concert. I mean, it, to see 30,000 people when One Step Closer came on, yeah. bouncing in unison, I thought Tinley Park was going to fall <laughs> to China. It was going to break <laughs> in the ground. And it was, there goes Tinley Park. Bye. It's all gone. So, uh, Chester Bennington, uh, you know, we honor him today. And, and always make sure you look in on those people that, you know, have some mental health struggles out there. You can always call 988. is a great number to get help if you need some help out there. 988. In the last year, that became that number to call people for. If you just need to talk to somebody and, and, you know, having a mental health crisis specifically, use that number. We remember Chester today on Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And proud to be an American where at least I know know I'm I'm free. free. (laughs) And I won't forget the man who died. Right to me. <laughs> and I, I stumbled the words. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, what right. are the lyrics? I just, I, I fumbled through. I was just humming along a little bit too. It's very important you get the lyrics of this song right. I know. And I won't, won't forget the man who died, who gave that, who gave that right to me. And I Please stand up next to you and defend her still, still today. Because there ain't no doubt I have this. <laughs> God bless the USA. I can't carry the note like Lee Greenwood could there. No, you cannot. No, no, I can't. It was like I voted yesterday. <laughs> oh, is that the thing you did that made the world better? <laughs> and your vote matters so much that it... No, what I realized is the voting system as a whole experience is broken. It's just terrible. It's, it's, I went into Lakeview High School in the theater, and it's just dark and gloomy. From the minute you walk in... It's not fun. Yeah. It's not inviting, and I feel like I'm in the wrong room, like I did in high school half the time when I walked in places. I just felt I, instantly everything came back to insecurity, and I'm going to get bullied. It's all it felt like. And then I'm supposed to actually make it an important decision when I go in there in the primary. So I went down to the vote. They didn't have a pen for me. I had to fill out the <laughs> circles, I've, I've, and I've messed the circles. You know, I'm outside the circle. Will it really count? And then I have to put the thing in myself, the machine, I feel like I did that wrong. It didn't count. You probably didn't vote. I probably didn't. Ugh. Probably didn't because it's so antiquated, the system. One of the election judges was sound asleep when I arrived to vote. <laughs> Who's snoring? Like, <laughs> now, look, those are volunteers, I believe. No, they get paid. I actually, I trained to be an election judge oh, once. Oh, it's more right? complicated than you think. It oh. seemed too confusing for me, so I never did it. Oh. Our, our engineer does this. Yeah. This is like, does it? No, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry. Not our engineer. Um, uh, Pacheco. Oh. Our punk rock IT. Yeah. Punk rock IT guy. Yeah. So wait, it's he, a long work day. You don't get paid enough per hour. It's like 120 bucks, but you're there like 12 hours. Well, I would do that for 120 so, bucks. Would you? Well, you well, especially if you can nap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, our IT, IT guy does that look where he hands it out to everybody. And, I think so. He's yeah. been out of the office all week. I think he's been training for this. Steve, if you're listening in the building, please come yeah, and Steve, explain. If you're in here, come on in. Come here. on in. You got an open mic for you to explain the process because. It just isn't inviting at all, and I I wish there was at least a DJ spinning. Yes, like our guy Greg Corner, if he was up there on the stage of that theater, you know, putting a putting a mashup together of Mr. Brightside, know. my own worst enemy. <laughs> if he if like I, a Little John song, you don't have to do much. I'm only there, you know. Basically, it's a new audience every ten minutes there in the voting. <laughs> oh, great! So if you so give we me, need four songs. If you give me <laughs> if you give me Mr. Brightside, Killers, give me that one. Give me Lit, my own worst enemy, and maybe. Let's see. What would be another banger? 
to get, like, get us fired up. House of Pain, jump around. There you go. I was going to say zombie cranberries. House of oh, Pain works better. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Not a bad song, but that's, that goes with the vibe I had yesterday. I got nervous when you said banger. I started sweating. I didn't know what to say. Yeah. So killers. Okay. <laughs> Lit my own worst enemy in the House of Pain, jump around. I'm going to be, enjoy that voting process right there, despite the antiquated materials in front of us. And I don't, we talked earlier on the show about this in the first hour where we were talking about ways to make it better. And a lot of you guys had some great ideas, like Brooke checked in a whack a mole voting machine. We get to hammer the person you want to vote for. <laughs> I, love that. Uh, I love that idea. Someone recommended doing it at Whirly Ball. That'd be great. Now, Whirly Ball has several locations, not just the city, but also in Vernon Hills and Naperville. And that's it's incredibly fun playing Whirly Ball. The point here is we realized earlier this morning more people would vote, as in more than, I don't know, 20% of the, the voting population that turned out yesterday. More people would vote if it was fun, if there was an yeah. experience, if there was something. Yeah. And our listeners get it. Yeah, Scott and, and Jimmy Park yeah, said ahead, laser Kara. tag. La- exactly. You know, that would be fun. I love laser tag. That would that would make my voice heard. I would make sure that I was at the polls if I if there was laser tag involved. Now there's some people checking in. It's like, why do you still go in and do that and have that bad experience? You can get, you know, at home voting easier than ever yeah. now. I don't want that either because I don't want to be alone at home. I want to, you know, party a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know I'm making important decisions. I get that part of it. They're important decisions. But I want to party a little bit. Just pour yourself a Miller Lite and do it at your kitchen table. Oh, I can. Of beers. Yeah. But I also like walking in and seeing other people voting going like, hey, how about us, right? How, oh. how, about, how about us feeling good here? I have the opposite feeling. Whenever I go in to vote and I see the other people there, I go, oh, they're really letting anybody vote now. Oh, <laughs> okay. Right. Can we screen it a little bit? <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, the voter turnout in, in Chicago for the primaries yesterday was, quote, shockingly low. That's the quote from uh, our guys at ABC7. And they don't have the numbers exactly of how shockingly low it is. But my guess is under 20%. Probably under 20%. Yeah, they're still counting the absentee votes, so... I, I think it's so low they couldn't pick some of the winners. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they put people up that have already bowed out of the presidential election. Yes. I don't understand why they're on the ballot still. Am I wrong on that? Can they get back in if they people voted for those people? I don't think so. Not if they're not. I mean, you could write in whoever you want. But, yeah, they're still prid. Like, Nikki Haley's name was in there. Uh, yeah. she And, and yes. Yeah, so everybody knows it's going to be Biden and Trump. But there was all the DeSantis. Yeah. Like, those names were in there. They're, they've already they're said they're done. Yeah. But it's, it's the illusion of choice, Brian. That's half of what living in this country is. Is that what it is? That's, that's what it is. It's putting people on the ballot that have already said, I'm staying home. Yeah. I'm not going to go to the White House. It's like when you you go to the grocery store and you think you have options but they're all owned by one company it's mm. the same thing mm. yeah but they taste different at least like i can still buy <laughs> cheerios i can buy lucky charms i can buy golden grams and, and, and all you're doing is feeding that general mills cash cow that's okay i'm getting different <laughs> <Yeah>. flavors <laughs> good i'm glad so they should have cereal at the polls you're saying and that's not right yeah. a cereal bar would be amazing oh, a cereal yeah. buffet an omelet bar Make my own omelet. God, can you Bloody imagine Mary bar. An, an omelet bar and a Bloody Mary yeah. while you vote? That's what I mean. This country, we went wrong somewhere. We well, need to get back to the basics. Yeah. Omelets and voting. And if someone said trampolines, they went out there. I would love that. <laughs> hey, hey, there should be every sky zone should have a polling place inside. I recommended that we get that place where you can skydive indoors, that big thing you see on yes. the highway. Uh-huh. It flies you in the air. Like you vote and you get to do one run on that. I think it costs like 200 bucks to do that, but I, just give me that for voting. Just do something. Rob checked in. He said you could you should set up ballot boxes in cemeteries because one, you can do a ghost tour, and two, it would be easier for the dead to vote. Oh, <laughs> nice. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Just a reminder one more time, tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, we'll have more of those Lollapalooza tickets for you. Uh, just listen at 8 o'clock, four-day passes. We announced that yesterday all the information, everything you need to know at Q101.com and, of course, on all our social media pages. So a couple things coming up, uh, some Jenny McCarthy audio that's going to, uh, from here with Jenny McCarthy, our girl, born in Evergreen Park. From MTV, singled out, and of course the Playboy model. Let's relate to the Playboy match. There's been a lot of talk of that lately. There's been a lot of documentaries about it, but some audio you you want to hear on this about her take in the Playboy mansion and what goes on in there. But first, a couple other entertainment things going on with Ewan McGregor. Of course, remember from the Star Wars movies. And do you remember the movie Train Spotting? That is a movie that we kind of put his put him on the map. 
and it's about uh, well, it's, it's about well, heroin abuse, really. Um, but it's a dark movie, but also has an incredible soundtrack. A band called Underworld on there with a, a great soundtrack. That's where you kind of got to start. But I think most people remember him from the Star Wars movies, of course. But he's doing a film with his wife, and they have a sex scene in there, and they hired an intimacy coordinator <laughs> to help them out with the sex scenes, like because. I think they were afraid he was going to just kind of have sex with his wife on the on the scene. Because, you know, hey, I know her. I've already done it with her, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Got to know my way around these parts. Yeah, but I guess it shows that when you see sex in movies, it's not even close to sex in real life. It just cracks me up that somebody has a job as intimacy coordinator, which sounds much more respectable than fluffer. <laughs> yes, it does. <Yeah. laughs> well, they take their job super seriously. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is a thing. I don't think there's any romance scenes that are done in TV now that don't have any sort of intimacy coordinator because you have to remember there's not only the married couple which you would understand why they might be familiar with each other sure but they're in the room with a director and a cinematographer more right. than likely and you need to make sure the director is not popping off and making unreasonable requests it's not a peep show brian well i was kind of hoping for that <laughs> I know. The, uh, it's a show called a gentleman in moscow and they're a husband and wife on the show but they said they needed this because it's all about the crew. It's odd to be naked in front of people, and it's odd to be intimate in front of the camera. And because they know each other, they might just do things that make everybody else feel <laughs> oh uncomfortable. <my> <laughs> hey, guys, pull back a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. So there's a, it's like a, almost being there saying it's like a dance scene. It's like choreography. Yeah. See, I've always believed that when actors have sex or make out on the screen, and they always go, well, it's acting. It's not really romantic. I, I think that's BS. It is BS. Because they end up hooking up afterward. Yeah. Like, a lot of times, they'll like they'll marry those people sometimes that they have a sex scene with in mm-hmm. a movie. Yeah. And but so I think it's a way for them to tell their significant others. Absolutely. Honey, I just clocked in like a steel worker. I went to work, and then I went home. There was nothing about Eva Mendes getting naked with me. Yeah. That, that did not did nothing for me. Come on, let's go to Costco. But you like you didn't do like theater as a kid, right? I didn't. I had to take a theater class for this this degree at Bowling Green State University. It's called radio, television, film, and I had to do a theater class. But you didn't kiss anybody on stage. I didn't. Oh, I've had some some emotionless kisses. Wait, you had to kiss people yeah. in high in high school? You no, did? in college. In oh. college, yeah. I was an for art school. For a play was... or just because? No, I wish I was kissing people just because. I only <laughs> kissed people because it was an assignment. Oh, an assignment. It... Well, it was acting. It was uh, an acting class. All right. Did you? Well, so once you kissed them, there's no way you didn't feel anything. No, I can be pretty heartless. <laughs> I don't believe you. No, I was, but it's just like it's a job, right? No, it's not. It, it's still a physical contact, and you did something there with that person, and I, I bet you went home and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what a lofty allegation to make. <laughs> what, a, what a weird thing to look in my eyes and accuse me of. Let me put it this way. Did you know the person you were kissing like yeah. well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you want to date her? No, but she wasn't bad looking. Okay. But still, I, I've got a job. It's it's like survive and protect. I go and do my mission and leave. Mm. You drop the grenade. Yeah, you right. get out of there. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I guarantee, and I'm not, listen, I'm not being demeaning. I don't think you were killing it at Columbia. I don't think you were like, you know, big man on campus. No, no, I no, God, I wish. <laughs> I, I would love it if I was, I wasn't. So they told you to kiss somebody in class. Yeah. And you're like, this is the day I get to kiss somebody. It, yeah, but it's also... It's not like a, it's not romantic. One, the kiss what not that long. But two, you're doing it in front of your peers. But you're still kissing somebody. But do you like kissing? I actually do. Yeah? Yeah. You like kissing. Yeah, except for my jaw clicks. I know I your jaw it. clicks. I know, I know. Wait, is your jaw click at all, Karen? No, it doesn't. Yeah. It grosses me out. I yeah, know. So, Megan, I never talked about it on the air a couple weeks ago, and then we started making out at home a little bit, you know? Yeah. And then she goes, <laughs> you she, know. She got started laughing. You're, you're right. Your jaw does click every time we make out. I didn't notice it. Has it killed your guys' intimacy? It killed that night. It killed that vibe. That was terrible. Well, unlike those vibes going on, uh, Jenny McCarthy talked about her time in the Playboy Mansion. And there's been a lot of documentaries coming out. You know, the longer things go, somebody comes out and talks about how bad things were. And she was on uh, Watch What Happens Live. And this is what she said about being in the Playboy Mansion back in her time when she was Playmate of the Year. Oh, Jenny, what so... do you remember from your Playboy days? Oh, my God, where do I start? Really? I, was I it don't... a positive experience for you? For me, because Hef was married at the time. And there was that big Playboy scandal TV show special. Yes. They asked me to be part of it constantly. I'm like, listen, I didn't have that experience. Pamela didn't have that experience. Right. We were at a different time, I think. Right. I was there when his kids were throwing bacon at me in high chairs. <laughs> right. It was like the perfect time. Yes. But there was so much, like, still, like, sex going on with, like, 
gross celebrities in the, the grotto areas and right. stuff like that. I went to the party, so I got to see a lot of that action because they were like only hot women and the ugliest dudes. Oh. They were like really, really wow. old. It was like Viagra Central. <laughs> like the Viagra Triangle here on West Street. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine being one of those guys now like listening to it. Hey, that's Jenny. I remember, yeah, she was uh, good looking. I remember I, uh, you know, got with her friend at that thing, and now she's calling them all, you know, <laughs> these ugly, gross guys that were in the grotto. Ew. Um, and then if you're a certain age, you remember the show Singled Out mm-hmm. on MTV, which was a great, and that's where Chris Hardwick started too, right, Case? That's right, that's right. And if I was a Walking Dead fan, Chris Hardwick used to do the post show of Walking Dead before I stopped liking the show. But here's her talking about how she got on that show. I got cast on MTV, but they rejected me 17 times. MTV did. They said, we'll never have a playmate on this network. So I snuck into the auditions, disguised myself until I got down to the final two. And they're like, are you that playmate that kept calling? I'm like, ha ha. (laughs) So that was it. Do you know who you were up against? Yeah, some female comedian that I can't remember. But she was doing jokes and I I wasn't. I was just being like strong because you got to be with all these guys. Yes. So I was being kooky and just myself and I got it. That's the lesson right there for everybody out there. to see her disguise. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I mean, I think Jenny McCarthy was probably hard to, hard to disguise right. something there. Yeah, I think she was wearing a mustache and, and kind of dressed like Columbo. <laughs> <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show on Q one hundred and one.